And today we are going to talk about HPC Decorator and its application in parallelization of quantum computing. Yeah, so don't, don't worry, you don't know, no need to know much about quantum. I will tell you everything you need to know. So first of all, um, instead of um, um, discrete states, a qubit has a superposition of its basis states. Yeah? So they all live in parallel yeah? and we can modulate these states with gates. Yeah? So we apply some uh, um, gate and then the uh, state has changed. So the probability of being in uh, being in a state has changed. Yeah. And uh, once we measure, uh, we collapse the superposition and get a discrete state again. Yeah. And this can, and the um, actual distribution um, of the quantum state can be estimated over many shots. Yeah. So many realizations of the experiment. Yeah. And um, for now and for the near future, yeah, the qubit count on devices and um, the noise, so the quality of the qubits, uh, will limit quantum computing for some time. Yeah? And classical uh, or typical algorithms with pu pure quantum computing, like uh, um, uh, for uh, in, in, um, prime factor factorization, you know, Shor's algorithm, uh, this will take a long time until we are there. It needs uh, ten thousands or millions of qubits. Yeah? But for now, with hundreds of qubits, we can do something. And this is uh, called quantum classical hybrid computing in the noisy intermediate scale quantum era. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So, where's the. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, nice. Okay, so we have the NISC era noisy intermediate scale quantum. Yeah, so limited amount of qubits and noisy qubits. Yeah? We can do something. We have variational algorithms. Yeah? So we have a classical part and we have a quantum part. Yeah? And now we talk about it. What we do is we always split our computation into the classical compute part. This optimizes the parameters and um, spawns um, computations uh, on the quantum device. Yeah? And the quantum device executes circuits, yeah? so a concatenation of gates. And these are then measured yeah? the, and uh, fed back into the classical optimizer. Yeah? So we have separated host and device model. The host takes care of I.O., optimization and parallelization in our case. And we have accelerator. This is a device, runs quantum circuit. This can be hardware. Then we call it a QPU, a quantum processing unit or it can be a simulator, so pure software that can run either on CPU or on GPU or both, whatever you have as a backend. Yeah? And then we realize parallelization opportunity. As said, we have many repetitions of the experiment. Yeah? These are shots, yeah? so we can parallelize over all these shots. And we have to calculate expectation value. We have different parameters and um, uh, parameter parameters for the circuits. Yeah? So we have a lot uh, um, of possibilities to parallelize and we want to use it. Yeah? And as well, as I said, we have uh, a node yeah, where we have CPU, GPU, and maybe a quantum device, and we ut want to utilize all of them. Yeah? So then what we can do, we can actually uh, um, 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 decompose the work and send small circuits. Yeah? They are, these are not demanding. Send them to CPU, more demanding circuits to GPU, and the biggest ones then to the QPU. Yeah? and then utilize the whole node and not have idle GPU or CPU. So, and for now, uh, our hardware expected 27, 28. Yeah? Uh, this is NV center based. So you have a diamond and you create a vacancy yeah? and then a uh, quantum state can be used and uh, manipulated. It's at room temperature. That's one rather unique feature yeah? and can be scaled down to GPU form factor. Here you can see rendering with a quantum chip and the, uh, um, the qubit array. Yeah? This is nanometer scale. So you have to place atomical precision. There we have the pattern for. And it will use 150 watts around. And the uh, first device will be uh, 64 qubits. Yeah? So that outperforms uh, even the biggest clusters today on quantum tasks. Uh, yeah, so now our software problem. Yeah? We have many algorithms. Yeah? They will be developed by users, yeah? for example. Uh, for example, variational quantum eigensolver. This is used in chemistry. 
or quantum machine learning, this is used yeah, for AI tasks and so on. Yeah? And they all call accelerators. Yeah? So the computation of gates yeah? and circuits. Yeah? And we have many accelerators. We have hardware. And on software side, we have state vectors. And we have tensor networks, for example. Yeah? And these accelerators are implemented as strategy. Yeah? And now the question is, how can we actually parallelize if we have already strategy parallelized software available? Yeah? So naive approach would be, yeah, we have an accelerator, we just add, we have state vector, so we just call it parallelized state vector, uh, put the parallelization in there and do the same for the others. Yeah? But there we already see that's not a good idea, right? So we have many internal and external accelerator methods. We would have to take care of all of them, yeah? apply a special parallelization scheme and so on. Not a good idea. Yeah? We have many algorithms yeah? and we would get lots of code duplication. Yeah? So, and even, even further, we may need different parallelization strategies. Yeah? Then we introduce short parallel state vector or circuit parallel state vector. So you see it would grow a lot, right? If you just put more classes in, in the hierarchy. Yeah. So what's a better solution? Oh, let's check, right? We need more abstraction. Yeah? Uh, as we know, abstraction separates concerns and removes code duplication. Yeah? And well, let's consult our favorite C++ software design book. Yeah? Maybe the one of Klaus. Who knows? Yeah? And you will find an example. Yeah? You will find uh, one thing that clearly matches or perfectly matches. Yeah? That's the decorator design pattern. Yeah? It adds modification on top of strategy, yeah? and it allows stackable mods. Yeah? So what we can do is we can parallelize nodes on top of a heterogeneous node, for example. Yeah? And implementation can be runtime polymorphism. Yeah? So you can choose yeah, at runtime, uh, classical object-oriented, or via type erasure. Yeah? So the magic behind std function or std any. Yeah? Or if you want to have a, a zero cost abstraction, then you can do templating, yeah? static polymorphism. OK, so let's take a look. Yeah? How does it look like? Yeah? We have the accelerator with a virtual calc function. Yeah? And all the accelerators, hardware, um, and all the software methods, yeah? these would live here. Yeah? So there are many, 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 many. Yeah? But we now here talk just a demo accelerator. Yeah? This overrides the calc function, as all the others would do. Yeah? <clears throat> this is for demonstration purpose here. Yeah? And then uh, they derive from an accelerator. And what we do now is introduce the decorator, the decorated accelerator. Yeah? This derives from accelerator yeah? and holds an accelerator and forwards the calculation to its accelerator at some point yeah? and wraps behavior around it. Yeah? So pre and post processing. Then we have two implementations for, for demonstration here. We have the parallelized. This parallelizes over multiple processes. Yeah? Uh, this implements then the override calc function. And we have heterogeneous. Uh, you give it a, a vector of accelerators, and it chooses the accelerator uh, um, based on the local MPI rank of the, um, of the current node. Yeah? And then uh, sets to the accelerator. So we can use it to uh, spawn two. Uh, processes, yeah, one taking CPU accelerator and one taking GPU accelerator. I will show that. Okay, so let's talk about the basic accelerators. Yeah? How is it implemented? I have to move a bit. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, we have the class accelerator yeah, that takes a name, has a name, yeah, has the compute function I already talked about, is virtual. This returns an accelerator result. This is just a class which wraps uh, statistics yeah? and adds the functionality to update statistics and to print it and so on. Yeah? So it just has statistics. Yeah? It, it takes a, a vector of circuits yeah? and it takes a vector of shots. Yeah? So we specify for each circuit we want to run, we specify how often this one has to be run. Yeah? OK, we can print the name, yeah? compute uh, accelerator, yeah? and give the name here. OK, yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah? And for you to remember, we have accelerator UP. That's just a unique pointer, yeah? so type dev. OK, so let's take a look at the derived one. Of course, it uh, uh, inherits. Yeah? And we set the default name as demo. And we initialize the, the base class yeah? with the name. And then we would overwrite the compute. Yeah? And uh, I will show uh, as, as next how this looks like. 
And here we have the uh, gates and circuits uh, uh, measure and repeat for n shots. Yeah? So this is measure circuit. This measures one circuit for n shot times yeah? and re repeats the bit string counts. And of course, we have some check input function yeah? just, to, just to check. OK, so how does the compute function look like? Yeah? We, uh, for, for you to have uh, the correct printout later, yeah? we do some uh, synchronization of the print, yeah? then print the name. Check input, and this is the actual computation. Yeah, so um, we create the uh, vector of results, yeah, and update uh, for every element in the circuits. We update the statistics with the measured circuit and circuit with the respective shots, yeah? and that's it. So no, nothing fancy. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look at the main. So that's the calling code. What we do here is prepare the circuits and shots. Yeah? Uh, uh, this would be a specified ansatz. Yeah, so uh, think of uh, like an electrical circuit, yeah, which uh, uh, encodes your information. Yeah, uh, this is here just a dummy, of course. Yeah, and observables are uh, uh, used to generate expectation values. Yeah, there, there will be many. Yeah, so you have one ansatz, but many observables. Yeah, and this can then be used to create circuits. Yeah, with ansatz and observables. Yeah, and number of shots here we uh, could uh, give arbitrary amount yeah, or the needed amount based on, on some scheme. Yeah? Uh, but here we just set a uh, default value to, to 10 yeah, for all. Yeah? OK, so in reality, these would be uh, guided by a scheme. Yeah? If you have VQE, for example, uh, you can do this on the fly uh, with a reiterative scheme. Yeah? And then uh, circuit and, and end shots are uh, calculated. You do, just do what you have to do to fulfill the, the error margin. So now let's look at the calling side. Uh, this one in red, the box, this is the only thing that will change in the main. I will show later when we introduce the decorators. Yeah? Here it's just a accelerator, make unique demo accelerator. Yeah? So we just get the, the demo one yeah? with the default argument here, then the name is just demo. Uh, and here we just iterate over, uh, uh, just call the, the, the compute method, yeah? get the statistics and then print out, that's all. OK, let's take a look. How does it look like? We build, yeah, and then we run MPI execute. Of course, here, yeah, this is not parallelized at this moment. Yeah, so it will be calculated both. Yeah, and uh, what does it? It prints MPI enabled and called accelerator. In this case, the demo accelerator both times. Yeah? OK, so nothing fancy there. Yeah? So now let's take a look at the uh, accelerators, uh, decorators. Yeah? It inherits from accelerator, same as before. But now it gets an accelerator pointer. Yeah? And this is hold here. Yeah? And of course, it checks if it's empty or not. And, okay. and we have some access function here. Yeah? OK, and what we do is we uh, um, initialize the accelerator name yeah? and uh, 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 we move the given accelerator pointer. Yeah? So it's a new point, a unique pointer that is moved. Yeah? So we get on a chip. OK, so now first derived class parallelized. Yeah? What should it do? Uh, this is all handled in the compute. Yeah? Uh, here, what we do is we get the accelerator pointer, and we then initialize not the accelerator class, but the decorated accelerator yeah? part. And we move the accelerator, and we get the name parallelized now. Yeah? You will see the name coming up later. Yeah? And for now, we have an isWeighted function, uh, a flag, yeah? that uh, allows us to um, um, use one function uh, for, for the uh, decomposition, which just uh, uh, decomposes over the circuits and one which decomposes over weighted uh, by gate count and per circuit and a number of shots per circuit. Yeah? So an even more distribution. Yeah? And the whole magic is in the compute function. So let's take a look at this compute function. What we do is we uh, uh, get the local shot and uh, circuits yeah, from the circuit and shots. This is done by MPI rank decomposition. And here we just create the locals. Then we uh, uh, forward the computation uh, uh, to the hold accelerator compute function with the local uh, 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 parts of the, of the, of the vectors. Yeah? And then uh, MPI reduce at the uh, results. Yeah? That's all. Yeah? Then return result. That's done. Yeah? So we have pre-processing and post-processing. Yeah? And this is the actual compute, which is handed down. Yeah? And we can stack now. Yeah? So we can uh, add many, uh, uh, many decorators on top. Yeah? 
And this is all handed down until we reach the actual accelerator. Okay, so now let's take a look at the other one, the heterogeneous. Yeah. Uh, here, one type def accelerators is vector of accelerator unique pointer. <coughs> uh, um, what changes? Yeah. We now move not just an accelerator pointer, but we choose which accelerator pointer to move. Yeah. And this cho choose function, yeah, uh, this is the magic in this case. Yeah. And as I said, uh, it just uses the uh, node local. Uh, um, MPI rank to do that, yeah? And uh, we forward the, the compute function. I do not show again. Okay, so how do we call it? Yeah? We have the parallelized accelerator. This was the thing we had before, yeah? Just the demo accelerator. This is now wrapped into the parallelized and gets the is weighted flag, right? Okay, that's done here, yeah? So the, for the heterogeneous, since we deal with unique pointers, it's a bit more difficult, yeah? We have to create the uh, vector of accelerators. Here, in, in we first uh, put a CPU backend in and then a GPU one, yeah? just with the name here. Yeah? We would have a network me uh, a CPU method or a GPU method, yeah? but for demonstrator, it's just the name here. Yeah? And here, uh, we do actually the same. We have parallelized. This is wrapped uh, with heterogeneous. This takes the accelerators and the parallelized gets the is weighted flag. And that's that's all. Yeah? So we have parallelized, wrapped around heterogeneous, wrapped around the accelerator. Okay, so let's take a look. We have the parallelized. Now yeah? we run it the same as before with the MPI and two processes. <clears throat> what does it tell? We have the parallelized compute. Yeah? So not just the demo compute as before. Yeah? And it prints out the rank, the start and the end of the, of the vector. Yeah, so in this case, 0, 70, 70, 140. So we have 140 shots in total. Yeah, um, since we have 10 shots per circuit and 14 circuits. Yeah, and here local size is both 70. And um, then we do the actual computation. Yeah, so demo compute two times. Yeah, and here we have the local results, and these are then uh, uh, reduced back and printed. Yeah. And what changes if we add the heterogeneous compute? Ah, well, that's uh, highlighted in, in, in yellow here. Yeah? That's the only thing that changes. We actually, after the parallelized, we call the heterogeneous compute. Yeah? And here you can see, ah, the CPU is called once and the GPU is called once. Yeah? So you have split yeah? where you want to do the work. Well, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Good. Of, of course, we have. Software SDK, yeah, there's Crystal SDK. You can check it, quantumbrilliance.com, uh, Quantum Brilliance Crystal. And you can check out the example codes. Yeah? There's, there's a, a link to, to um, Dropbox. Yeah? And there uh, is implemented in the object-oriented and in the type erasure one. Yeah? So you can check both. Yeah? Maybe I add uh, the, I know, I won't add static. <laughs> Doesn't make sense there. OK, yeah, thanks a lot. Are there any questions? Um, I have one question or one shadow problem with quantum computing. When with regular computing, I have a mental model. If you tell me something is sold so many gigabyte or, or this process, I have some idea what problems I can solve. Now you tell me this has 64 qubit. Do you have a tangible example from what can I solve if I have an accelerator with 64 qubit? What realistic problem does it have to be with? Can I solve Rubik's Cube or do some time factors? Some, some ideas. Some, some ideas. Yeah, no. yeah, OK. So he, he was asking uh, what we can do with 64 qubits. Yeah. So um, yes, good question. Yeah. Um, we have uh, many different uh, uh, applications in the pipeline. Yeah. Um, some use uh, variational quantum algorithms. Yeah. Uh, one example is uh, um, optimization of databases. Yeah? So you have a relational database, and there you can optimize the join order. This is quantum machine learning. Yeah? And uh, um, uh, you can already do a lot with uh, uh, 64 qubits. That's, that's, that's quite a lot. Yeah? Right now, we are, we are simulating on GPU, and there you can go up to 30. Yeah? And uh, please remember, if you increase one qubit, you double the memory amount. Yeah? on a state vector. On tensor network, it's different. Yeah? If you're lucky, you can get 100 qubits on the, on the tensor network if you have a GPU cluster. Yeah? 
but uh, yeah, this is this is the uh, first device with 64. Uh, in principle, you could scale arbitrarily. Huh? Another question? Uh, I'd like to complement this question with another question. So, but as a metric, I mean, uh, 64, for, uh, 64 qubits, it would be how many units or uh, how many gigabytes, megabytes? Ah. Okay, okay. If you do state vector, okay, they so asked uh, how many gigabytes of memory would be 64 qubits. Yeah? Okay, so if you have state vector, I think uh, the uh, what you could do on one fourth or one eighth of super MOOC NG uh, was around 40 something qubits, 42 qubits or so with state vector. That's the most demanding in terms of memory. Yeah. Uh, in tensor networks, what you do is you use symmetry uh, uh, and you actually uh, scale down the problem size yeah, quite significantly. But it's a difficult optimization method. Yeah? The last question from my side, what would be the estimated commercial price in terms of multi-coding? <laughs> well, uh, that's uh, nothing I know about and we will see yeah, how the competition is as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So um, normally there is another company slide, right, where you show um, since we can scale down in size, I show you the device, yeah, and this, uh, you can actually scale down more. Yeah, you could put this in the car, for example. Yeah, and of, co of course we have to see how it is allowed to 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 buy it. Uh, of course, this one 64 qubits you cannot break ASR. Yeah, so there is no security risk in in, in this case. Yeah. So you could maybe buy it, yeah? probably more expensive than a GPU. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. One more question or? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot.